What's up guys? My name is Shane um, and today we're going to be getting you out of auto mode and into manual mode. We're going to go over three things, ISO, shutter speed, and aperture. And I'm going to dip into a little bit of what they do and how you can improve your photos. All right, so uh, first things first, aperture. Aperture is the little hole in the lens that opens and closes, which lets light travel through to hit the sensor. A larger aperture uh, equals more light coming in. A uh, smaller aperture equals less light coming in. The smaller the f-stop, the larger the aperture. The larger the f-stop, the smaller the aperture. So when you get into f22, uh, the hole is going to be really small. Whereas a uh, 2.8 is going to be a lot bigger. It's going to open that hole right up. Actually, I have a lens a manual. I have a manual lens right here uh, you can look at. This right here, uh, you can see that little hole in there. That's at f22. So a really small hole. That's going to have everything in focus. But at the same time, it's going to be extremely dark. Um, so you're going to have to bump up your ISO or be in an extremely lit situation. Um, whereas if I turn this little ring right here, uh, opens up the aperture and you should be able to see right through it. Uh, there it is. Oh, there I am. I see you guys right through there. So that's a large aperture. That's a 2.8. So as you can see how big the hole got, um, that's going to let in a lot more light and give you a lot shallower depth of field. Um, to get that nice blurry background. Um, like if I were to stick my hand up in front of here, See how it's in focus and I'm blurry in the background? Whereas opposed to a larger aperture, it's that nice depth field where a smaller aperture would create everything in focus. So if I had my hand sitting right here and this was in focus, I would also be in focus. But to get that nice blurry, buttery background, uh, you're gonna wanna be in a larger aperture. All right, so that kinda touches on aperture a little bit. Now let's dip into shutter speed. Shutter speed is how fast the shutter opens and closes. So if you were taking photos of a moving object or sports or anything moving really with movement in it, if you set your shutter speed really fast, like one one thousandth of a second, one twenty five hundredth of a second, you're gonna get, uh, it's gonna freeze that frame real quick. So it's gonna, bam, take that photo and freeze the frame, get a nice crisp image of something moving. I don't know if you've ever tried to take a photo and it's really blurry in the background, like when you're taking a picture of a car and everything's blurry, you know, you see a trail of the car, um, it's because your shutter speed wasn't fast enough, uh, it was too low. So getting that faster shutter speed, it's a nice crisp image of that. So if you're at 1 2500th of a second and you're snapping a photo, everything that's moving, you're gonna get that, that photo in focus. But you can also use that to your advantage for something artistic if you wanna you know, have light trails at night on uh, on some car taillights pulling away. You'd want to set a really slow shutter speed. Um, so you want to pump your shutter speed down to like uh, maybe 30 seconds. <laughs> so it opens that shutter for 30 seconds and you get, you know, a nice trail. So you ever see those pictures in like the mountains when you see the car trails all through the whole entire thing? That's a photo that was probably taken within, you know, maybe even a couple of minutes. They they set their aperture really high, um, you know, like maybe f12 to f20. They they set their shutter speed for 30 seconds to a minute, maybe. You can play around with that, and you're gonna get that cool light trail of the taillights driving away. It's gonna capture that light throughout the whole entire 30 seconds, and that's how you get those cool photos like that. If you're ever trying to take photos in the Milky Way or anything like that, you're gonna want an extremely slow shutter speed around 30 seconds or a minute. A lot of cameras will only go to 30 seconds unless you get a the app on your phone that hooks up to your camera. If you have a wireless camera, I mean a Wi-Fi camera or a Bluetooth camera. If you have a Bluetooth camera, you can hook up your phone and you can set your shutter speed longer usually, but a lot of cameras in the camera will only go or let you go to 30 seconds, maybe a minute. But if you get an external shutter that, or an external shutter button that plugs in, you can kind of set that to however, however slow you want. So you can take a photo for 30 minutes if you wanted. But either way, it's gonna capture all that light into that sensor. And that's how you get those crazy shots of the Milky Way. Also, a lot of people will take a bunch of pictures like that and stack them all together. So that's the basis of your shutter speed. Uh, one more thing to touch on is ND filters. Um, if you want it during the daytime, 
because if you try to take a 30 second photo during the day, your whole screen's gonna be white. You're gonna get a crap photo of just a white background. So in order to get those, you see those photos of the waterfalls like flowing, it looks like the water is like smooth. You wanna wanna put an ND filter on your, uh, that screws right into the front of your lens. And what that does is it creates like sunglasses almost for your lens. That way you can stop your shutter speed down without introducing all that light and you get those nice daytime pictures, long exposure daytime pictures rather. All right, next thing is ISO. ISO digitally controls the light that is put into your camera. Um, it, the only problem with the ISO is the higher you go on it, the more you increase noise, the more it reduces dynamic range, it reduces color accuracy. So you're gonna want the lowest ISO possible. Um, most cameras will start at 100 ISO and that's where you start. If you're outside um, taking photos of you know some portraits or anything like that, you can always start at ISO, play around with your shutter speed, play around with your aperture, you know, then take a couple photos, look at them, see, see how they came out, see what you like. You might, you might be able to increase the ISO some. Like right now I'm shooting at an 800 ISO, which is still soft. This camera right here, I can bump it up to 6400 ISO and still get really crisp pictures. On my first camera, the Canon T3, I, I, yeah, I can maybe go to 2400 before it started getting really grainy and breaking down. The newer cameras, like this is an R6, has a, a full frame, larger sensor than my T3, uh, which was a crop sensor. The newer the camera, the bigger the sensor, the better the sensor. They have a lot more range of ISO before they start breaking the image down. But basically, ISO is just a, is digitally enhancing the, the light in the photo. But all three things together, ISO, shutter speed, and aperture, create the, the light that is put into your sensor to create your picture. And you can play around with all three artistically to get different styles and, you know, different backgrounds and different photos, really. But yeah, so if you have any other questions, feel free to reach out or comment down below. And if you like this video or you wanna see more or you want me to touch on something else, let me know. Hit that subscribe button if you want. You don't have to. Uh, and uh, like this video. Yeah, and I'm out. Peace.